Hello. Welcome to Tennessee's at-home learning series for math. Today's lesson is for all our seventh graders out there, though all children are welcome to tune in. This lesson is the 14th in our series. My name is Kayla Anderson, and I'm an eighth grade math teacher at Rocky Fork Middle School in the Rutherford County School System. I'm so excited to be your teacher for this lesson. Welcome to my virtual classroom. If you haven't seen any of our previous lessons, you can find them at www.tn.gov slash education. That's also where you can find the optional student packet. If you haven't seen any of our previous lessons, you're welcome to tune in today, but it might be more fun if you go back and watch those other lessons first, since we'll be discussing material that we've learned previously. Today, we will be discussing using a graph to recognize proportionality in mathematics. Before we get started, to participate fully in today's lesson, you will need paper, pencil, a surface to write on, graph paper if you have it, but if you don't, you can still participate, and you might want that optional student handout. Okay, let's begin. Let's begin by looking at data on a graph. This graph shows the time it takes JC to print t-shirts for her school's math club. Let's analyze this graph. Use the points on the graph to complete this table. Notice that the axes of this graph are labeled. The x-axis is labeled number of t-shirts. The y-axis is labeled time in minutes. The first point we see is 1, 5. 1 is the x value, so it's the number of t-shirts. Let's place 1 in our table on the x row. The y value is 5, so that's the number of minutes. Let's place 5 in the table in the y row. What does the point 1, 5 tell us? The point 1, 5 tells us that it takes JC 5 minutes to print one t-shirt. Next, we have the point 2, 10. What does that one mean? Right, it means that it takes JC 10 minutes to print two t-shirts. Let's place that ordered pair in the table. Then we have 3, 15. It takes 15 minutes to print three t-shirts. Let's put that in the table as well. Finally, we have 4, 20. What does this ordered pair tell us? Right, it takes 20 minutes to print four t-shirts. Let's finish out our table. Now that we have our data organized in a graph and also in a table, we want to decide if these quantities are proportional. Do you remember how we can do that? Yep, we can create ratios from the table and then determine if the ratios are equivalent. Let's use the ratio of time to the number of t-shirts. This means that the time is going to be our numerator and the number of t-shirts is going to be our denominator. So what are those ratios? Time to t-shirts. 5 to 1, 10 to 2, 15 to 3, and 20 to 4. Are these ratios all equivalent? Do they have the same unit rate? Remember that a unit rate is a comparison when 1 is on the bottom. Well, let's see. 5 over 1 is equal to 5. 10 over 2 is equal to 5, 15 over 3 is equal to 5, and 20 over 4 is equal to 5. Yes, every one of these ratios has a unit rate of 5. It means the ratios are equivalent. Because they're equivalent, it means that this relationship is proportional. B says, now let's look at the graph a little closer. Start at 1, 5. As you move from one point to the next on the graph, how does the x-coordinate change? As you move from one point to the next, how does the x-coordinate change? As I move from here to here, what happened to x? 
Well, the x value increases by 1 each time as I move from point to point. That x value is increasing by 1 every time. What about the y value? How does that y value change? Each time the y value is increasing by 5. Does this agree with the pattern that we see in our table? Yes. As the number of t-shirts, which is the x value, increases by 1, the time, which is the y value, increases by 5. What do you think that means? You are correct. It means that it takes 5 minutes to print every t-shirt. Okay, well, this is the type of thinking that we're going to be using in the lesson. Let's go ahead and get started with some more problems. Tanya exercised for 30 minutes. She noted the calories burned at three times during her workout. How can Tanya use this information to find how many calories she burned after 15 minutes of exercise? Well, what do we know? We know the number of calories that she burned after 10 minutes, 20 minutes, and 30 minutes. What are we trying to find? Well, we want to know how many calories Tanya burned after 15 minutes, but that information isn't given. So how can we use what we do have to find the number of calories that she burned after 15 minutes? Well, maybe it will help if we look at the data organized in a different way. How else can we represent the data from this table? Right, we can organize it in a graph. So here I have a graph with an x-axis and a y-axis already drawn. What should we label them? Well, the x-axis is going to represent the time. And that's being measured in minutes. How about the y-axis? The y-axis is the number of calories burned. What about the scale? Do we have room to graph 285 calories if we count by ones? Definitely not. So we're going to need to think of some other scale to use other than ones. Let's count by 25s. So this first mark would be 25, 50, 75, 100, 125, 150, 175, 200, 225, 250, 275, 300. So we're counting by 25s. I just haven't labeled every one of them. I've only labeled every uh, counting by 50. Okay. So what about on the x axis? We need to go up to 30 minutes. We definitely don't have room to count by ones here. Well, we can count by two and a half. So if this first mark is two and a half, this is five, seven and a half, 10, 12 and a half, 15, 17 and a half, 20, 22 and a half, 25, 27 and a half, 30. Okay, now that we have our axes labeled and our scale labeled, um, let's plot the data. So first we have the ordered pair from our table 10 comma 95. So remember that the x value tells us to go right to 10 and then the y value tells us to go up to 95 and then we place our point at the intersection. Okay. Next, we graph 20, 190. So from the table, 20, 190. Remember that that tells us to go right to 20 and up to 190. So 10, 95, 20, 190. And then the last ordered pair is 30, 285 from our table. So it tells us to go right to 30 and up to 285. So 250, 285. Let me just double check that. So 10, 90, excuse me, 10, 95, 20, 190, 30, 285. 
Okay, great. So is this relationship that we've just graphed linear? Can we connect the points with a line? Yes, we can. So I'm just going to draw a line in here to connect my points. So let's use our graph to find the constant of proportionality. Find the differences between the coordinates of any two ordered pairs. Okay, so as I move from this ordered pair over to this ordered pair, I'm noticing that as I move from here to here, I'm increasing from 10 to 20, so I'm increasing by 10. And as I move up, I'm increasing by 95. And then if I were to move from this point to the next point, again, I'm moving from 20 to 30, so I'm increasing by 10. And as I move up, I'm increasing by 95. So the constant of proportionality is this change in y here, which is 95, over the change in the x value, which is 10, or 9 and a half. Well, how can we use that constant of proportionality um, to find the number of calories that Tanya burns in 15 minutes? Well, we can use a proportion. If we set up the proportion, the number of calories in 15 minutes is equal to 95 calories in 10 minutes. Let's solve this proportion. We can multiply both sides by 15 to isolate the number of calories burned, which is C. So because C is being divided by 15, the inverse of dividing by 15 is multiplying by 15. So we can multiply by 15 on both sides. That will isolate this variable C, which is representing the number of calories burned. Doing the multiplication here, 95 over 10 times 15, we get 142 and 5 tenths. So what does that mean in the context of our problem? Right, it means that Tanya will burn 142 and 5 tenths calories in 15 minutes. We could also use what we learned about uh, the constant of proportionality in an equation. We know that when we're using constant of proportionality, we have y equals kx. And remember that k is the constant of proportionality. Well, we found out that our constant of proportionality is 9 and a half. So we could write the equation y equals 9 and a half x. Or using the variables that we're, that we're working with in this problem, we could write it as c equals 9 and a half t where T is the time in minutes and C is the number of calories that are being burned. So if this is our equation and we want to know the number of calories that are burned in 15 minutes, 15 minutes is our time, which is T. So we can substitute 15 in place of T. Doing that multiplication, we find out that it's 142 and 5 tenths which notice that it doesn't matter which method you use, whether you solve the proportion or whether you set up the equation using your constant of proportionality. Either way, um, Tanya is going to burn 142 and 5 tenths calories in 15 minutes. So we use the data that we were given in the table to graph. Now we're going to start with a graph to solve the next problem. Okay. So the graph shows a proportional relationship between the distance and the amount of time Mr. Brown draws. So let's take a closer look at the graph. What do you notice about this graph? Well, notice that the graph is linear, meaning it makes a straight line, and it passes through the origin. And remember that the origin is 0, 0 on our graph here. 
So what does this, the fact that it's linear and that it passes through the origin, what does that tell us about this situation? Well, it tells us that it's a proportional relationship. So let's think about what each of these points tells us about the problem. So we've got zero comma zero. What does zero comma zero tell us about the problem? It tells us that at time zero, Mr. Brown has traveled zero miles. Does that make sense? Yeah, it does. If zero time has passed, he hasn't driven any miles. What about 1, 55? What does that tell us? Well, it tells us that at one hour, Mr. Brown has traveled 55 miles. What else does this point represent? Think about speed. Right, this point tells us that Mr. Brown was traveling 55 miles in one hour or 55 miles per hour. When the x value is 1, the y value is the constant of proportionality. What about 5, 275? Right, this tells us that when Mr. Brown has driven for five hours, he's traveled a distance of 275 miles. Does that agree with our constant of proportionality? Remember, our constant of proportionality was the y value and the x value was 1, and that was 55. Well, how do we know if this 5, 275 agrees with our 1, 55? Well, we could write a ratio, 275 miles in 5 hours. Can we then change this to a unit rate? Remember that a unit rate is the rate when there's a 1 in the denominator. Right, so if we change that to a unit rate, we have 55 over 1. Remember that we're dividing by 5 here and dividing by 5 here to create an equivalent ratio. So we know that our constant of proportionality is 55. Now that we know that, let's write an equation that represents Mr. Brown's trip. Remember that when you write your equation using your constant of proportionality, it's going to be y equals kx, okay? And our constant of proportionality was 55, so y equals 55x, where x is the time and y is the miles traveled. We've created a graph from data. We've analyzed a graph to find data. Now we're going to practice determining if a graph represents a proportional relationship. Okay, so we need to explain why each graph does or does not represent a proportional relationship. Well, let's look back at the graph that we just used for Mr. Brown. We noted that this graph was linear, meaning that it makes a straight line, and that it passes through the origin, and we said that this was a proportional relationship. So, does this first graph represent a proportional relationship? Yes, it does. It is a proportional relationship. Why is it a proportional relationship? Right, because it passes through the origin, 0, 0, and it's linear. makes a straight line. What do you think about this one? Well, it is linear. It makes a straight line. Does it pass through the origin? No, it does not pass through the origin, which is at 0, 0. So although it is linear, it's not a proportional relationship. Because it does not pass through the origin. What do you think about this last one? I'll pause while you think about it. Well, this graph does pass through the origin, which is 0, 0, but it's not linear. It curves and it's not straight. Therefore, this is not a proportional relationship. Remember that graphs of proportional relationships will be linear and will pass through the origin. We've looked at three examples of using data and graphs to solve proportional relationship problems. Let's practice what we've learned. We'll work together on this one.
Each one fourth cup serving of cereal has three grams of protein. How can you use this graph to determine whether the quantities are proportional and to find how many grams of protein are in one cup of cereal? I'm gonna write over these points so that they're a little bit more legible. We have the point one fourth comma three. Hopefully that made it better and not worse. We have the point one half comma six. And we have the point three fourths comma nine. Okay. Zoom in a little bit and make that a little more legible. Okay. So how can we use the graph to determine whether the relationship between cups of cereal and grams of protein is proportional? Well, what did we just look at with our last three examples? The graph is linear and it passes through the origin. Therefore, it is a proportional relationship. Can we use the data given in the graph to determine the number of grams of protein in one cup of cereal? We can find the constant of proportionality and create an equation. We can choose any point on the graph, create a ratio, and find the unit rate. So let's use the point 1 half comma 6. When we create a ratio, we have 6 grams of protein for every 1 half cup of cereal. Well, how many halves are there in six? Right, 12. So that means that the unit rate is 12. Let's think about what this means in the context of our problem. The unit rate is the comparison of the number of grams of protein to the cups of cereal. So there are 12 grams of protein in one cup of cereal. Let's think back to Mr. Brown's trip. Suppose the graph of Mr. Brown's trip is extended. Find the ordered pair with an X coordinate of seven. What does this point represent in this situation? Well, we know that the constant of proportionality is 55 miles per hour. So we had written an equation y equals 55 X, and we knew that our constant of proportionality was 55. We also uh, remember looked at this point one comma 55 and figured out that our Y value 55 when X was one, that was our constant of proportionality. So what does an x-coordinate of 7 mean? Well, remember that the x-coordinates in this problem are the time in hours, so the 7 represents 7 hours. So how can we know how far Mr. Brown traveled in 7 hours? Well, right, we can use this equation that we created. Um, if y equals 55x, where y is the distance traveled and x is the amount of time, and we want to know that the 7, or excuse me, we know that the 7 is time, so x equals 7, we're just going to substitute 7 in place of x. Once we've done multiplication here, we get 385. So Mr. Brown traveled 385 miles in 7 hours. I should label that. Miles. 385 miles in 7 hours. Last one. Look at these graphs and determine if they represent proportional relationships. Explain how you know. I'm going to give you a couple of minutes to do this one on your own. I'll pause long enough for you to decide if these are proportional or not, and then we'll check them together. Okay, the first one does represent a proportional relationship. Did you get that? Good. So how do we know that this one is a proportional relationship? Well, it's linear, makes a straight line, and it passes through the origin, which is zero comma zero. How about the second one? The second one is not a proportional relationship. Did you get that one also? 
Well, why is it not a proportional relationship? Well, it is linear, it makes a straight line, but it does not pass through the origin, which is zero comma zero. And so because it does not pass through the origin, it's not a proportional relationship. Great work today, seventh grade. You really did a good job. After this video, you will have some problems to practice on your own. I will show them to you now, or you can find them at www.tn.gov slash education. Good luck and do your best. I'm going to go ahead and write that um, website on here for you as well. So www.tn.gov dot gov slash education okay so there are the problems problem number one says for each graph shown tell whether it shows a proportional relationship and then explain why or why not so think about those examples we did together where we discussed whether or not graphs were proportional number two says the graph shows the relationship between the distance a taxi travels and the cost of the taxi ride is the relationship proportional and explain your reasoning. Well, folks, I really enjoyed reviewing using a graph to recognize proportionality in mathematics with you today. Thank you for inviting me into your home. I look forward to seeing you for our next lesson in the Tennessee at Home Learning series. Bye.